Hello, my name is Gabriel Said Reynolds. I am the Crowley Professor of Islamic Studies and Theology at the University of Notre Dame. Here is my brief, very brief video on a mysterious and intriguing figure in the Quran, the Holy Scripture of Islam from chapter or surah 18, a figure known to Islamic tradition as the green man. So I will go ahead and share my screen and introduce you further to my topic. The figure is named in the Quran as servant of God. So you see my title there, the wise servant of God in Quran 18. Just as a reminder, the Quran is an Arabic scripture with 114 chapters or surahs. And we're reading here from chapter 18 or surah 18. In the surah, Moses meets a figure referred to in the Quran as servant of God, but named by Islamic tradition as Al-Khidr, that is the green man. And this figure, Al-Khidr, takes Moses on a journey. During this journey, he proceeds to do three surprising things. He makes a hole in a boat full of people. He kills a young boy. And he fixes the wall in a town full of evil people. Finally, at the end of the story, Khidr explains his actions. Namely, an evil king was seizing innocent people's boats. So by making a hole in this boat, he kept it from being taken away. The young boy was to grow up an unbeliever, and so by killing him, he kept his parents from the grief that they would experience by his unbelief or from his unbelief. And then finally, beneath the wall was a treasure belonging to orphans, and by fixing it, he kept the evil people of the town from finding it. Their father was a righteous man, and thy Lord desired that they should come of age and then bring forth their treasure as a mercy from thy Lord. What's interesting to note here is that this Quranic story is part of a larger tradition, which both precedes and follows the Quran. Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike told stories about a wise figure who did surprising things. Most important for understanding the Quran is a story that's in some manuscripts of a text known as a spiritual medal of John Moschus, a monk who was in a monastery in Bethlehem. He was perhaps originally from Damascus, and he traveled throughout the Middle East, including Asia Minor, Syria, Palestine, Egypt, collecting stories of holy people. And in one of these stories, he relates how an angel of God met a monk and took him on a journey and did three surprising things. He stole a cup of a pious man, he strangled the son of another pious man, and he rebuilt the wall of an impious man. And then finally, much like Al-Khidr in the Quran, he explains the reason for his actions in the end. The cup had been stolen. The soul of the son could be saved if he died early since he was to grow up a sinner. The impious man would not find a treasure that lay hidden under the wall if the wall were rebuilt. Well, let me say just a couple of things about how later Islamic tradition reads the Khidr story. First of all, most Muslims will hold that Khidr is a prophet, although he is not named a prophet in the Quran. And this is because he seems to demonstrate superior knowledge to Moses. And Moses is certainly considered a prophet by Islam. So there necessarily he too must be a prophet. The Quran says about Khidr that he has min ladunna ilman, which is understood to mean knowledge proceeding from us. And this is taken by some Muslim scholars to suggest that Al Khidr offered an inner or esoteric knowledge, whereas Moses was the counterpart because he offered an out, outward or exoteric knowledge of the law. A key term appears in this passage, which is ta'wil. Khidr's demonstrations of a deeper meaning to his actions in his explanation at the end is seen as a kind of mystical interpretation or ta'wil. When he says, now I will tell the interpretation ta'wil of that thou couldst not bear patiently. And for some Muslims, this provides a model that can be applied to other passages of the Quran in seeking an inner meeting. Interesting to note that some of Khidr's actions, especially the slaying of the young boy, appear in an exoteric reading to be illicit if one reads Quran chapter 5 verse 32, the murder of a soul is compared to the murder of all souls. But they might be seen as having some sort of inner or esoteric meaning through this mystical interpretation or tatwil. And then finally, interesting to note that for Shiite Muslims, this story can be especially important because it points to 
the, the importance of an authoritative guide. And in Shiism, a series of leaders known as imams are seen as providing that guidance in that authority. Finally, just a few conclusions on El Khidr. Moses in the Khidr account does not understand the latter's actions, and so he expresses some sort of consternation. What? Hast thou slain a soul innocent? And that, not to retaliate for a soul slain, thou hast indeed done a horrible thing. Those are the words of Moses. How could it be that Moses, who is understood to be a prophet, would express this sort of consternation, maybe even frustration. Well, the Quran seems to do this in order to emphasize the wisdom of Khidr and his mystical interpretation of things. And this signals the Quran's interest in, first, a knowledge or wisdom still deeper than that of the revealed law, and second, the place of an authoritative guide in leading believers to discovering this knowledge. I hope that there was a little bit of wisdom that came through in this very brief reflection.